Greetings and howdy howdy. I have been trying to get this uh, little intro made to the walking tour video that I did in Curacao for about a week now. I hope you can hear me all right. Uh, maybe two weeks ago I uh, broke out Miss Judy who was suffering from a broken ankle but is able to walk now with a boot. And we found this lavalier microphone for $3 at the five, five below in Manassas. So this is my first real test of it. But I did want to get a little uh, intro to this almost hour-long video of our walking tour on the island of Curacao. You will see our ship, the Majest Majesty of the Seas. No, Allure. Allure of the Seas. <laughs> it's only been two weeks that I couldn't even think of the name. There is a Majesty of the Seas. I just wasn't on it. You may be able to tell that I have relocated again uh, to a second, third, third house sit since I got back from the cruise. The first one I made a few videos. The second one I really did a lot of uh, unpacking of my storage, sorting it out, and repacking. So I would have winter clothes available, even though I still have my t-shirt on now. I do have uh, lounge pants on, and I have a few extra pairs of sweatpants available. And I have winter coats and gloves and mitts and stocking caps, so I'll be good and toasty this winter, even though I'm going south, so hopefully I won't need it too much. But uh, this was actually, the, the part of the walking tour was two parts because the video cut off at one point. And Ray A, I don't know if that's Canadian, like there's an A after the end, or his real name is Ray A, but uh, he introduced himself as Ray A, but I didn't have the video rolling at that point. But uh, you'll see it's an exciting tour, walking tour. I think it was actually a two-hour tour, and we uh, excused ourselves after an hour and went down and ate the lionfish, which you saw a small video of weeks ago. Uh, the Lionfish Cafe actually had internet, so I was able to post it there. But without too much more talking, I'm going to get this uploaded, and I'm going to re- or attach it and splice again to the two parts I've already spliced. I've been very tempted just to throw them up without the intro, but forgive me, I had no uh, external microphone on the island, and I was walking, so I did cut out a lot of spots, you know, where I was filming the ground or had it on by mistake or didn't have it on. So I've tried to splice it and condense it. It may only be like 45 minutes, but it'll definitely be the longest video I put up on this channel. I may actually be combining some of the older ones I did on my other channel. Now that I have the uh, Movie Maker re-downloaded. But one problem I ran into was at the house sit in Ashburn, I couldn't get the new computer connected to their internet, so I was using the one I had, the Chromebook I had when I was there, the previous time, which was like July. But it didn't have the video maker on it, or the movie maker, so I couldn't uh, upload and splice to it. So now that I'm in a new house and the internet is easy to get on here, and fast, I will uh, go ahead. Let me show you a uh, little Mr. Biscuit. Biscuit, wake up. Can you see him over there in the corner? He's sleeping on his couch. He's a black lab. Hopefully I got him in the picture. Let me see if I can see it again. Whoopsie. <laughs> oh, the camera's turning. Say hi, Biscuit. I'll have to go back and look and see if I even got him. I don't know if I did. So I'm going to cut this off now so I can get that up. But be sure. Oops, and look, I'm now I'm not in the picture. And that sign behind me, let me turn around and read it to you. It's a cute little sign. She has lots of cute little signs. May you never be too grown up to search the skies on Christmas Eve. Yeah, let's all be a little bit of child still and enjoy looking for the Santa sleigh. Anyway, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. If you're an American, thank you for those that wished me a happy Thanksgiving. I'll get this uploaded and ready for tomorrow. Thanks. Bye-bye. Not, not the curse words, please. <laughs> Just the nice words. And uh, yeah, learn about cultures, talk to new people every day. To me, that's amazing. I like swimming too, uh, diving, anything related to water. I look for any excuse to jump in the water. Okay? <laughs> so if you guys don't swim, you can say it loud so everyone can know. Karen from New York. Okay. 
Phil from the UK. London. And you can also say what you like, so we can talk <laughs> about that. Phil from UK, London. Awesome, awesome. Nicky from UK, London, loving the weather. Awesome. Patrick from Germany, I love doing sports. Okay. BDM, also from Germany, and I love the colorful houses here. Awesome, awesome. And Juliet, Florida. Awesome. Florida. Virginia, Florida. Jennifer, Florida. 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 Hey, Jackson. I'm Timothy, and this is Mustafa from Amsterdam. Okay. I love the bureaus here. Okay. <laughs> we'll do that. Jan from Virginia. And I'm Chip from Virginia, Texas, and wherever I land. Okay. And I also do YouTube, so if you don't want to be in video, let me know. <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect. I appreciate everyone being here. Uh, let's start. We'll head to the flag there, and from there we go up the hill. I didn't have the video going when the guide introduced himself. His name is Ray A. He's 39 years old from Curacao. Look at that big tall bridge. And we're going to go across a floating bridge. We're in Curacao. I didn't tell you that. Uh, we docked and are taking a free walking tour. They got lots of colorful buildings here and lots of murals. There we go. Let's see if he'll have some mercy on us today. <laughs> right? Uh, the two stars, li uh, little one is Lil Curacao, the bigger one is Curacao. Lil Curacao is an uninhabited island on the east coast uh, or off of the east coast. Uh, if you feel like uh, building your house there, feel free. When the government comes, you'll tell them Ray told you it's okay. <laughs> Uh, now I have a theory that Papiamento, our local language here, we speak it on uh, the ABC Islands or Papiamento Curacao, uh, is the easiest language to learn. So let's go ahead and put it to the test right away. No better way to just uh, jump into it, right? No courses, no nothing. Uh, we're going to look at the images done by Mr. Giovanni Abad. He's the welder that did this. And then read the title on top, try to make sense out of it. Uh, there's no mistakes, let's just be very uh, free spirit. Okay, let's go ahead. Check it out. Bridge. It's moving, the bridge is moving. So a boat can go through. It's like a swing bridge. Read it out loud. Yes. That's why Curacao has been above for a very long time. Okay, let's go to the next one. This one says Papiamento. Papiamento is our language. It means speech or conversation, what we're doing right now. And uh, like I said, ABC Island speak it, Roma Bonaire and Curacao. Of course, we have small differences between the islands. We say here in Curacao we speak it and Roma Bonaire they sing it. Okay, so we're more staccato in poetry, we're more melodic. Okay. In Papiamento, you would say Ami, that's me. Amo, that's you. Nos, that's us. So Giovanni definitely saw it as different people coming together on the island and creating your uh, modern day Curacao. Right? Let's go to the next. We can read it. Justicia Social, which translates into social justice. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. 
Ouais. Casarmo Classe Obreno. Exactly. <laughs> Desarrollo Classe Obrero, which is uh, Desarrollo's Development Classes, Class Obrero, the workers. Working Class Development, it focuses on the harbor, the inside part of the harbor, which is called St. Bay. And here you have the port refinery, which has been down for a couple of years now. Uh, you have ship repair and container hub. So before it was port refinery being our main source of income. Now I think uh, tourism is uh, becoming that. And uh, tourism, I think, is a uh, way sustainable way uh, to do it. So uh, we, we thank you again for coming to your side, right? An easy one, right? Exactly that. Quibra barrera racial, which means quibra would be breaking barrera, barrier, racial, racial. So breaking racial barriers, you see the faces. Uh, we have over 100 nations on the island. So of course, all the races and everyone got their own way of doing things and they want to keep it. So it's not an easy task, but it's a must make everyone cope with each other. Similar concept, more broader. Something about diversity and inclusion. Exactly. <laughs> diversity and inclusion, diversidad and inclusion. You're right, it's nearly the same word. That's yeah. right? yeah. the same word, that's what I'm saying. We shouldn't, we don't even need the YouTube courses to learn public right? <laughs> Let's go ahead, feel free. <laughs> the right to vote? Exactly. The Riechi is right. The voto is a voting. The autodeterminacion. Self determination. Right? Right to vote and self determination. You guys doing amazing. <laughs> The water guys heard better than you. <laughs> <laughs> Corso. Let me start with that word. Corso is really Curacao. That's how we say it in mm. Uh We don't write with C's that much. Uh, only time we write with C is if it's a name or a CH sound, which is the Ch. And uh, yeah, we write with K's and S's. In this case, uh, Curacao has an R, which we pronounce the rolling R, like R. And it's corso, so actually the two O's should have the accent on accent this way um, because the O becomes an O sound, right? So it's corso, un país, un país is one country, and it became one country after 101010 because before we were part of a constellation called Netherlands Antilles. Now, Netherlands Antilles used to be six islands in the beginning on the northern side of St. Martin. Say by Anastasia, uh, of course, the Dutch side of St. Martin because they also have the French side, and on the southern side here, which is uh, ABC Islands, is Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao. Aruba is the first to leave, uh, now St. Martin and Curacao also. So, those three became countries within the Dutch kingdom. Nobody's independent, all of them have European uh, passports still. And the three other who have smaller populations, not necessarily the size of the country, is smaller our best islands, which is Bonaire, Stacia, and Seba, and they want to become municipalities of the Netherlands. That's still in progress. Of course, it's difficult because we're in the Caribbean situation, and uh, they have, of course, a European infrastructure and laws. So yes, that's the situation. Uh, Curacao became a country in 10 of October, 2010, and they celebrated that uh, last weekend. So uh, they just took the stage there. It was, of course, 12 years of 10 10 10. Anyone? Pride Nation. Pride Nation. Prime. Prime is a very good choice. 
uh, we say Promenachon, which translates into first country, first nation. And you see a combination between the Caiquetillos or Arawaks uh, type of canoe and the Spanish came with this uh, tree, which is the Valencian tree. The Spanish came here uh, over 400 years ago and they wanted to farm the uh, orange, but it never became orange. So it's difficult for you to convince the world you're selling them an orange that's not even orange, right? Got a lot of explaining to do. It was harder here because of our climate, our extreme climate. Uh, stayed green, uh, different scent, different taste, and they took the peelings of it and created your curacao liquor. Curacao blue being the most famous one. So it's a good example for all of us that we can take the biggest accident in our life and translate it into the biggest success of our life, right? This is the last one. Let's go ahead. Resistencia Alapa Libertad y Igualate. <laughs> Resistencia para Libertad y Igualdad. What does that sound like? We think really logically. Don't look for it too far. Resistance equals Resistencia something. <laughs> Resistance for Resistance. Equality. Exactly. For liberty and equality. So, obviamente is easy. Right? You guys did amazing. <laughs> Let's talk about that as soon as we get to that gentleman right here. The statue. Okay, this gentleman right here, his name is Pedro Luis Brion. And actually was born under the name Federico Ludovicus Brion, but nobody knows that. So that's just a fun fact. Uh, that's because his father was French. He's uh, from Curacao. And uh, Pedro Luis Brion, what's the relevance of him here? First of all, we're standing on the Brion Plaza. Brion Plain right here, anything. Uh, government want to announce or celebrate will be done here. Number two, that's the Brion City Hotel. Number three, there used to be a Brion Bar back here. That's the Brion Pharmacy. We have a Brion uh, Beer. You guys get the point. <laughs> he was a national hero. And uh, they say he's the first admiral of the Gran Colombia. The Gran Colombia is a, let's say, a concept by Mr. Simon Bolivar of Venezuela to create a United States of South America. Uh, that didn't last too long. It was a piece of Guyana, Venezuela, Colombia, Panama, and also Ecuador. And uh, it started right here in Curacao. How Mr. Simon Bolivar in Venezuela wanted to free Venezuela. Of course, the Spanish were in control and the queen or king wouldn't just let a crazy man run off with their colony. Um, they were trying to kill Mr. Simon Bolivar, so he had to flee here. He came here as a refugee. Mr. Brion accepted him with open arms. And another one who embraced him is Mr. Piar. His statue is on the other side, on the side. And uh, they were sitting here, they built the octagon, and they started strategizing how they're going to free Venezuela. Now, mind you, all this time, Curacao is under Dutch control. So, um, but the Dutch didn't care if Spain loses a colony or two. They're like, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Don't worry about us. And uh, yeah, they started strategizing. They had to go to Haiti. Haiti is the first country in this side of the world, in the Western Hemisphere, to ever free itself uh, from colonization. They not only beat the French, but also turned around beat the Spanish right after, which were, uh, let's say, the top three biggest empires at the time. Haiti felt confident, of course. They say, any country want to be free, come to us, we'll assist. So they did go. Uh, when they reached there, Haiti said, you guys will be victorious. We will help you. We'll make sure you free all the black people in Venezuela as soon as you finish with that war. Simon Bolivar said, yeah, 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 yeah. But he really meant, no, 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 no. Because <laughs> he had so-called slaves himself. So he was thinking business. He really wanted to become the emperor of South America. So he had a big ego. Jamar Loaiza, we're gonna talk a lot about that gentleman right there later. You guys are gonna get tired of hearing his name, but yes. So, uh, Haiti told him that um, Mr. Simon Bolivar had other plans. He really wanted to be Spain in South America. And Mr. Piar, being a mulatto, mixed uh, origin, 
European and African. It's like no jungle. If we're gonna fight, they gotta be for everyone. So uh, Simon Bolivar convinced them. He, um, PR is the one that opened the way from Guyane all the way to the more central part of Venezuela. So they can bring in ammunition and food. And he's the one that lead the battle. He's a short guy like this. He's always on his horse uh, in front of his men. So he's like a people's champion. People respect him a lot. And uh, Simon Bolivar is not that good of a fighter, uh, but they call him the liberator of South America, which is a huge stretch, right? And uh, Mr. Brion is the one who controlled the waters from Guyana all the way up to Panama. So he's not only responsible for the freedom of Venezuela, but he also uh, helped with the freedom of Colombia and Panama after. Okay, so that's the history of uh, this gentleman right here and Mr. PR over there, both from Curacao. At the end, PR said, listen, I don't want to fight no more. It's the other gentleman I'm talking about now. And uh, I'm going to leave you in your war, Simon Bolivar. I'm going back to Curacao. So Simon Bolivar got a little jealous. He told the soldiers of Mr. PR, capture Mr. PR and execute Mr. PR. Because he didn't want nobody to go against his authority wanted to beat the big leader and uh venezuela claims they don't know where the body of our uh, general pr is so they came here in last april and mind you venezuela closed the borders to us a couple of years already they came here in april took the soil from different spots brought it back to the pantheon and put it next to their national heroes so not only is brion also a venezuelan national hero but pr now is too okay and the soil they took is from different spots where PR actually fought with the local militia and drove out the British Empire. Okay, not just PR, also Brion with a local militia. And Brion, because his father was French, he had assistance of one French battalion also who were stationed on the island. So um, that's a little bit of a history between us and South America. We will always have a close relationship. But at the moment, the president, Mr. Maduro, close the borders because he feels we leaning too much on the American and Dutch side and he rather on the Russian side and we have a um, US uh, um, uh, military base here so that's the issue okay so if you guys have his uh, whatsapp number please send him a message <laughs> Tell him we don't need to be enemies we're just neighbors right okay let's keep going we'll go up the hills now and check out Puraula. Ray A, did they sell Pepsi on this island? <laughs> I've only seen Coca-Cola on Aruba. <laughs> I haven't seen Pepsi in a long time. Well, that's you what they that. kept saying. <laughs> so I guess I have to have a Coke if I want a soda. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Let's go in here. We're gonna we're gonna use every inch of the shade we get. <laughs> Okay, small intro, we're also Are you okay with being on video? Of course. You too? <laughs> yes, of course. So do you want me to turn on the, the sound? Yes. Our philosophy turned a little bit from getting rid of lionfish now to like the more we eat lionfish, the less other fish we eat. Around 
Efficient with the fish. The chef wanted to do a close up view, so he's brought it out here. Unfortunately, the restaurant doesn't open till noon, but they're excited to me publicizing them on YouTube. <laughs> Even so, I gotta need more subscribers. But don't look back thinking I could have had eaten lionfish. What is his name? His name is Josue. So, oh, like Joseph? Yes. That looks frozen almost. The middle? The spines first? They can't hurt him when it's dead, right? Uh, it can. It can. You just got to get not get stabbed. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Because he doesn't wear gloves. If you freeze right? it for a long while, the protein will uh, dissipate. Oh, so he works with frozen. Food. And the heat does it too. And the smaller spines have the uh, are hollow, of course, and they have the. The poison, yeah. but All I guess the hollow. fish usually has to inject it. Exactly. So it's less. And it doesn't attack. It's you have to run. Into you run it onto yes. it. Okay. Yes. And the meat is poison free. Of course, the meat is not fish and shrimp. Mm. It's, it's delicious. So you're be knocking uh, two birds with one stone. <laughs> well. Food is going to become a problem as the economies get worse. So anything you can harvest yourself is better. Yes. And it's called lion because of the skin? Exactly. And the mane, I guess. <laughs> and you got a pair of earrings, so. I got a pair of earrings, yeah. Either keep them on Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> but they take all the skin off. Okay. Yeah, I don't like fish skin usually, but I do like the meat. <laughs> mm. Wow. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Gracias. Thank <laughs> you. Awesome. Okay. Here's all the spines out to dry, I guess. It's nice that they can take an invasive species, harvest it, and make some income from it, as well as food. They're sneaking it into tempura and sushi and everything else, which is very good. The idea is that you stay in a suite. There's one of these houses that's 100 to 100, 300 years old. Okay? So you can see that the spines
This is really being rebuilt. <laughs> yeah. You can tell it's not a U.S. tour. They'd be sued over some of this <laughs> walkway. <laughs> It'll be nice when it's refurbished. There's a little, look at that little thing by the door, Jan. A little wooden statuette, I guess, or something. I don't know what you call a little yeah, one. Yeah, statuette. I'm not. I had to turn it back on for these pretty flowers. Oh, and here's another one. See his name up there? He's uh, the fastest painter we have here in Curacao at the moment. He did these three faces in six days, and it was done for a project called Kaya Kaya. Now, Kaya Kaya is a festival uh, celebrated on this side of the harbor, and it's three times a year. Since we don't have summers and winters, it'll be beginning, middle, and end of the year. The last one was last month. That was the first after the pandemic. And uh, yeah, it's a sustainable block party, if I can explain it like that and they'll do it in a different block every time to leave the neighborhood. Somehow the camera went to power saving mode when I was videoing and cut my video off, so I'll have to splice these together or make it a part two. I think it was already about 30 minutes, which is a long video for me. This is about a two hour tour. He actually had a Black Star Line, and uh, the Black Star Line was taking black people back to West Africa, Liberia to be exact. And for him, re um, repatriation was very important, which is also one of the keys for the Rastafarian movements. And of course, Mr. Marcus Garvey was one of the leaders Mr. Uh, Bob Marley was looking up to, okay? And Mr. Giovanni Abad is uh, quoting Mr. Bob Marley. Giovanni's signature is 7.1. G is the seventh letter of the alphabet, E the first. And to Giovanni, this is in Curacao, our modern day mental slavery. Pretty sure we can recognize some of the symbols. You can uh, go ahead and uh, shout them out if you recognize them. Money, yes. Time. Sex. Definitely. Religion. Religion. Tree for growth. Yes. It's like an industrialization, right? Gender. Gender or sex. Mental illness, too. <laughs> Could be, right? Imprisonment might give you mental illness. Wait. Even love, right? So, yes, uh, this is definitely. What we'll see a lot, the taboos we being portrayed on the walls so people can actually deal with their emotions, right? So uh, let's keep going. We'll check some more out. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Not even 1%. <laughs> but uh, yes, here we see Mr. Sunder from Bursacom's art. Oh. And uh, he wrote a message for us in Papiamento in English. Let's not cheat, let's read the Papiamento first. Because we're becoming fluent in Papiamento, right? <laughs> and then we read the English translation. What does it say here? Bira Bida, Tong. yes. Bonito First it says ta lunch. <laughs> Bida, ta. Bida is life. Ta is is. 
Un is one. Bonita is beautiful. Lucha is struggle. Mm. Right? Life is a beautiful struggle. I'm just referring to the ballet or the dancer. That's for us to look at the dancer, it's very beautiful, but for you to actually practice it daily, that's a big struggle, right? What we're seeing right in front of us, Barrio Hotel, they set out to uh, make their neighborhood better than how they found it. They're all about sustainability. A mural on the right, Aerografia Luis. On the left, Royal Painters. Flying fish. Can easily tell the difference. Oh, Which yeah. one did what part? <laughs> it's sponsored by the dive shop. The dive shop is a dive shop called the dive shop. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty a creative. Yeah, that's creative. <laughs> and uh, miss, you don't pay taxes on the water. So as soon as they start building houses on the water, I'm moving there. It's your age. <laughs> a little healthier, a little skinnier. <laughs> a lot <Okay>. more rum. <laughs> Let's, a lot more. Let's go in this street first, then we come out here. What we're seeing here is Marley Trappenberg, local female artist. And on the side here is Derek Martina, local artist. And he focused a lot on the deep, uh, deep concepts. He's one of the ones that bring the taboos a lot in front of us. So it's art and a therapy at the same time with Garrick Marchena. Do the people ask for the house to be painted or do they have to get permission or how does that work? Kaya, Kaya, Kaya would uh, go check out specific spots where it's uh, possible to happen. And mm -hmm. then they get permission, then they commission the art. Yeah, commission. Oh, okay. So the city commissions, or the group commissions the artist. The, the group commissions the artist. The group goes to the city too to get the permission first. Oh, okay. I guess these are all private residences. Some are private and uh, some are other. No, oh, okay. Beautifying the city. Exactly. Giving you pride in where you live. Yes, here we have the community gardens run by the lady who lives here, Cindy Van Eman. Oh, behind this us. This is her husband. <laughs> and, uh, See how they drive on the, the steering wheels on the opposite <laughs> yeah. side. And on this side is Centropic Agroforestry. Oh, wow. Smaller crops, larger crops. And uh, yeah, well, let's uh, walk inside, see what we can uh, notice here. Let's let the car go through first. Please watch your step. We'll be going in a forest. An urban forest with uh, citrus plants, I believe. Sustainable food and shelter. Very important. Ooh. Ooh, a lily pond. <laughs> fish? Yeah, they have fish in them. They have some uh, golden fishes, if you can hmm. see them. There's something you can eat? But not that I know. Not that I know. We don't even have these uh, in Curacao, so. Some kind of a lily, uh, right. lily pond. But I've heard that uh, you can, you know how fertilizer is becoming scarce? That a fish uh -huh. pond, you can use the mm -hmm. fish poop mm -hmm. for fertilizer exactly. elsewhere. Exactly. Well, there's, some. there's some little gold fish, yeah. yeah. They're not big enough to eat them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to eat a lot of them. They're vegetarian yeah. size <laughs> meat. <laughs> So what is the purpose for this? Just the fish poop? Uh, the fish poop, yes. And the things keep predators from eating them. 
Do you have birds of prey that would okay, catch okay. the fish? Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Cassava. You have uh, maca prime. That's the tree he's uh, picking up right there. You have uh, sour sap in the front. Uh, lemons. What else? Kinepa, ginep, lemongrass, eggplants somewhere over there. Moringa. Yeah, they try to mix it up a little bit. Moringa is very. Mm -hmm. It's good to eat and grows mm -hmm. fast. <laughs> and uh, like almond too. Our version of the almond. This gentleman is uh, Mr. Um, Eric Lee. Eric Lee's slogan is, he's not the brother of Bruce Lee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's very hard to tell for us. I think they look identical, right? <laughs> Mr. Eric Lee sells, uh, let's say, our traditional... Uh, what you call it? Frozen cup, frozen smoothies. Mm -hmm. We call it Lee. And yeah, one Lee is uh, aggressive and the other Lee is sweet. <laughs> so he's gonna sell us the sweet Lee if you guys are interested. He sells everything for one US dollar or two guilders, local money. And he sells water and Coca-Cola too, okay? Um, unfortunately, he doesn't sell alcohol. So <laughs> But yeah, he's gonna tell us the flavors he has. <coughs> and uh, Kaya Kaya actually likes to preserve our tradition because we have a lot of KFC, Burger King, Pizza Hut, McDonald's here, and they're taking over. That's all the younger people know. And uh, Kaya Kaya wants them to also enjoy what our elders uh, enjoyed when they were there. Okay? That's Mr. Good. Eric Lee, take it over. Yeah. Your favorite is. Uh... Passion fruit. Passion fruit. No no milk. Pineapple. Pineapple, no milk. Peanut. Peanut butter with milk. Cocoa. Coconut with milk. Tamarind. Tamarind, no milk. And prune. Prune with milk. I want a pineapple and bottle of water, please. And a shot of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> you have to bring your mouth. Yeah, sorry. I'm good. Can we get one? Smooth. 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 Yeah, yeah. Tell him what you want. Or let him. We need passion fruit. Passion fruit. We'll go one by one. Passion fruit. One, two. No more passion fruit. Two passion fruit. Only two. We will pineapple. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six pineapple. Me too. Seven. Seven pineapple. Peanut. Peanut butter. One Peanut coconut. butter with milk. One coconut with milk. Coconut. Coconut. Yeah. One, two, three. Pineapple. Pineapple. Two. Yeah, two pineapple. Two pineapple. Nine. Coconut. Two. Tamarind. No. Two. No. Water. Not? Okay. And go so, eh? Ray A. has done a great job of introducing us to local people, giving us opportunities to support the local culture. My roommate is a big fan of that, so I'm sure she's having a thrill on this tour. I'm loving seeing the urban, see the big papaya on the tree over there? I might have to zoom in, let's see how I do that. Right over the plum colored hat, there's a big green papaya. And the yellow is just a branch that's got too much water. But there's also banana trees uh, and a lot of other trees he talked about.
Everybody's enjoying their frozen smoothie thing. Now, now he's collecting the money. He didn't take any when he handed it out and just expected people to be honest, which is nice. This is a nice little covered area. They have a lot of art on the walls around here. It's very gluey, slimy looking, so not everybody can deal with that. A lot of seafood in it. You have stewed okra, looks exactly the same. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Uh, you have tutu, which is polenta, and thank you, sir. <laughs> and uh, polenta mixed with uh, a black eyed peas. It's very heavy. A lot of times they cut it in a cylinder form. If you finish eating it uh, in the afternoon, I doubt you're going back to your work. You'll probably fall asleep. Okay? So uh, those are some. But uh, as we keep going, we'll talk about more about the culture here. And you guys, please tell me also what's the norm where you are from. I like to know. What's the schooling? Is there a university or college? There are universities here. A lot of the faculties are on, a, let's say, college level, but you have a couple of universities here, and uh, still the majority um, choose to leave the island. Okay, we're going back through the urban, of course, there's the papayas, even in better bloom. I forgot the name of the tree, but I know we thought of planting one in West Virginia that has all the legumes on it, but they said it wouldn't grow there. It makes a lot of food. Terra Sarah Linga or something. Terra Lingua, I think, is what it's called. But they have some here. And there's the regular vegetables over there. Let me get a picture of the sign for you. Of course, all in Dutch. I thought he said there was a hydroponic. Oh, there's like stuff like uh, cucumbers and squash, pumpkin in the back. There's cabbage, I think, or collard, collard greens, probably. I love the, all the little pastel colored buildings. <laughs> yeah, this definitely isn't your excursion off the ship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's more historic, more cultural. Very glad we found it. Villa lemon, lemongrass, I guess. Hmm. This is how it looks like when that guy is on point. And it's jam back. We were reading from the menu earlier, so we can continue. There's no sky out. varieties we don't see in the States very often. Construction everywhere. Cement mixer. Cost de Limon, maybe House of Lemons, I don't know. <laughs> Gentleman with his lollipop and cigarettes. There's some pretty trees with orange flowers. Maybe another walking tour, I don't know. The idea behind it is the owner 
Grandmother had a nanny who took care of these four children. When their youngest was sick, uh, nanny got diagnosed with terminal and state cancer. She always wanted a restaurant, and the owner is a man of his word. He told her, listen, if I ever start one, I'll name it after you. And he did so too. And that's why you see the birds all over the walls. They uh, represent, the, let's say, the messengers between where we're at and where Myra's at. And they sort of serve local and uh, international cuisine. And here you can also see our national bird, which is the wada wada. It's a vulture slash bird of prey. And uh, yeah, you see them uh, lurking all over the place at the ostrich farm, looking for baby ostriches. I work at the ostrich farm once a week. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of warawaras trying to eat our baby ostriches, okay? Neighborhood Watch. That's probably a more traditional excursion up there on the little motorcycles. I'm glad I don't have to wear a helmet today. Pablo Te Dushi? Als jullie de sleutel laten, dan kunnen we het even. Ik weet het, wat jij er bent in de twee. That's the Iguana ride. You can also check it out online. You can do it in tours in the city. And uh, it's from my ex colleague who we used to dive with, Mr. Pablo. Hello. <laughs> Look at these cactus. Use every inch of the shade. So you can see two of the type of cactus we were talking about. Lots of tropical flowers on this tropical island. Main road coming up. Mm. More trees with flowers. And flowers on the ground under them. Yeah, there's the steepest part of the uh, trip. If we make it up there, it'll be easy on you. <laughs> <laughs> You know, most Americans are used to walking to school uphill both ways. Kaya Kaya means street street, and you can see the name right there. The last Kaya Kaya took place on the other side of the street. And it was the yard division. They had different yards. One was carnival music, one was urban music, one was Afro beats, uh, traditional. Uh, Here we have a couple of genres. Each season will be a different genre.
not sit here. Don't lean against the fence. Very sharp. Yeah, what's the significance of this one? In the South American indigenous uh, cultures, this would be your Pachamama, which uh, translates to Mother Nature or Mother Earth. And uh, like I said, Art is trying to put the taboos in front of our face so we can recognize uh, what's uh, really hidden. And they're dealing with a female creative force. And uh, why that? But because here the biggest influence is from the church, uh, Catholicism, Catholicism to be exact. Uh, Christianity is the biggest religion in Curacao. And when we're little, we're always being taught that the creator must be a masculine energy. And the first creation is also masculine. And the only reason uh, the creator created a feminine or the female was because that uh, male felt lonely. And that's the story we get when we're little. And artists are challenging that story, right? Not only the artist, but also the science now is backing the, let's say, the other story. Uh, science found that the oldest, uh, let's say, skeletons they found till now, the humanoids, could be Lucy, the 4.4 million year old one in Eastern Africa. And they say from 4.4 4 million coming to 3 million years ago, they're, all they're only finding female skeletons. I don't know where we were, but they can't find us. Uh, number two, in the laboratory, they explain that the X, X chromosome females have more genetic material than the XY chromosomes, which are males, right? So if you're gonna grab one out of the other or pull one out of the other, you have to have females first, then you get males. Number three, uh, the embryos. First stage starts off being a female, then you have the variation, which are males. And number four, our bodies. We have uh, breasts that don't really work, unless your significant other thinks the nipples look uh, pretty. <laughs> Besides aesthetics, there's not too much uh, you can do with them, right? They're not that practical. So we see the female prototype as very crucial for not only nurturing life, but also creating life in the first place. Okay, and that's what the artists are trying to say. We see a lot of female portraits everywhere. Little parakeets. Lots of parakeets. Oh, and there's some cockatiels, or the white ones. Lots of big pigeons here. Some of them rather large and mottled that I haven't ever seen the colors before. White and brown pigeons. That's new to me, but so is their native bird. Again, we are in Curacao on the free walking tour hosted by Ray A. Very informative. Behind the scenes kind of tour that you wouldn't see unless you came with him, but it is going a little bit long. He's talking about the Kaya Kaya festival where they come and paint the streets. Here I can get a perspective of the two ships. I want to turn this off and take a picture. I'm so sorry, let me get out of your way. But they're supposed to demolish it. We're going to see it later. That's the, that used to be the kind of plaza hotel. It's a ghost town now. Okay. And uh, we come up here to talk a little bit about sports. Um, here in Curacao, number one sport is still soccer or football, depends which you call it. And number two would be what we see here in front of the, let's say the ship. You see some lights sticking out. That's a baseball stadium. 
And uh, yeah, it'll be soccer number one, baseball number two. At the moment, Curacao is uh, current Caribbean champions. So if you guys go back and talk to your nations, I'll tell them to let Curacao beat them at least once. <laughs> we can make it to the World Cup one. Yeah. <laughs> can we negotiate that? Yeah. But yes, um, uh, baseball is also very trending. For capital, we're doing very good when it comes to them. We have our own team, and uh, lucky enough, because a lot of times we have to. Anything in the Olympics? Yeah, right. Yeah. You guys, another one? Uh, break away from the tour. In the Olympics, yeah, break away from yeah, the yeah, I want to use the tour. I know how to get back. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just follow, go to the ship. Andy Martinez, one of the ones who.